Hello, my friends. Hello. Um, so today we are going to be doing the, um, oh, where did I have my notes? Aha. Uh -huh. We're going to be doing the, um, Poetry Tube newbie tag created by Adrian at Strip Covered Lit like a thousand years ago. Um, I don't know how I miss this. I might have actually done it before. I don't remember. But um, I saw there's a new um, booktuber who I will put in the description below. Um, Facer. Is it Aaron Facer? Gosh, I hope I said your name right. Um, it will, it'll be down below. And um, he's great. And he uh, did this the other day. And then, so it got me. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I started going through and dude, like for all you people who think that like no one watches your videos after a month or whatever. No, I just went back like two years into booktube history and watched a bunch of y'all. Good stuff. All right. So, um, let's get into this. Um, do you read and write poetry or do you just read it? Um, I read and I write it. In fact, not right now, but sometime this week, my next chat book, Karma Phoenix Rises, will be available and I will have links for that once it goes up. Um, so, and then if you want, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before because I never talk about it, but the end of everything is out. Um, this is where I show and show and show. Um, who was your favorite poet? Um, I'd say Bukowski. Like, I don't really think there's much of a, um, question there. It's like Bukowski and then there's like second place is nowhere near, um, where he would be. Um, what is the one question you would ask your favorite poet. Um, I wouldn't ask a question. Um, actually, I wouldn't ask a question of any of my favorite poets or writers or anybody like that. Um, because every time I have met um, someone who I've looked up to, um, I've been completely disappointed. Um, you always get these lofty... Um, ideas of what, you know, uh, people are like, and then you meet them and you're just like, God, and then someone's like, well, maybe they're having a bad day, whatever, like, who cares, like, if somebody was shitty, somebody was shitty, and if it was a bad day, it was a bad day, but I think if anything, I would just want to observe them, almost like, like, go to their place, and, like, their place is, like, has, like, a glass wall, like a two-way mirror or something like that, or a one-way mirror, or is this a two-way mirror, I don't know, the one where I could see through, but you can't see me, and I would just sit there and, like, write what I saw you doing, you know, like, watching someone's actions I think is way more um, intuitive of them than hearing their canned answers to a bunch of questions. Um, and number four, favorite poem. Now, um, I, I, this changes all the time, like seriously. Um, and, Right now, um, my favorite poem is, here, I'm going to read it. Um, it's by Bukowski, shocker, and it's called Death. Now, I thought I had this in one of my odd, like, kind of bootleg collections of his, but I couldn't find it, so... The version I'm reading was from a magazine, like, uh, back, way back when, and, um, it's been, like, kind of truncated at the end, like, um, 
it's missing a little. But um, this is the only version I could find of it. It's called Death. Look, he said, you got spider traps all along this wall. It's fascinating. He was outside my door peering at the stucco wall. I said, come on in. He said, no, wait. And he got a twig and found some ants. And he said, Bukowski, I'm going to make this ant run the gauntlet. The phone rang, and I answered the phone. And while I was talking and listening, he said, Bukowski, he got away from the first spider. Now the second one is out, and he's gonna, and he's got the ant by the rear legs. Listen, Linda, I said, I've got a visitor, and also my toilet stopped, and the shit is coming up through the tub. Bukowski, he said, now the spider is throwing the net over him. He's weaving around and around. Now he's moving in, Bukowski. He's got him. Death! The landlord came in. It'll take a little while to clear it up, he said. He was talking about the shit. All right, I said. Linda, I said. Shit and death are everywhere. I'll call you back, she said. Now I've got a spider, said my visitor, and I'm giving him to the ants. I walked outside. For Christ's sake, kid, will you stop playing the spider ant game? Let's go for a ride. The landlord gets very nervous when he plays with the plumbing. Look, he said, the ants are chopping the spider's legs off one by one. Good strategy, I said. Let's go. We drove down to Norm's and had breakfast. My friend commented continually on humanity. He didn't think they were much. I didn't argue. My friend was a great admirer of Ernest Hemingway. I drove him to Hollywood and Normandy and let him out. When I got back, the ship was still in the tub. And then I think the line, the next line is, uh, I didn't want to take a bath anyway. Um, but like now someone reading this would go, oh, that's just, um, somebody journaling about their day, you know, and somebody else would read it and go, um, like the, the, the shit and the death, like that's uh, like an allegory, you know, like it's a metaphor, um, like shit is all around him and it's coming up and there's nothing he can do to stop it and death is happening all around him and there's nothing he can do to stop it but he just has to keep going on and keep living um and then having the conversation about humanity um along with this it's just like like is it supposed to be read that way probably not it's probably just him writing a bunch of shit but this is what makes him great like this is voice you know like there is a voice in his stuff that there isn't in other people's stuff and poets today that i've noticed with very few exceptions have no voice there is a a group collective conscious voice that um is in everything and everything sounds like everybody else and you could put anyone's name on anything and no one would ever know and it's sad um but yeah so i really really like that poem right now i just love the linda shit and death are everywhere like and then she's like i'll call you back you know it's like um there's humor in it but it's also totally fucking true like whatever so that's my favorite poem right now um what is your favorite poem to read aloud my favorite poem to read aloud would probably be um, this poem that I read when I was 16 in our English classes poetry reading thing we had to do. And um, it's by Henry Rollins, and it was in the book um, One From None, which was my absolute favorite poetry book um, that whole year. Like, um, I had that bang and black coffee blues, but one from none to me just like blew the other ones out of the water. I don't have it anymore, um, the book. So I'm trying to find old original copies because I think there's a collection that has all that in it now. But anyway, 
The poem is really short and it doesn't have a title. And it says, I want to take a screwdriver and mutilate my face and find a woman who loves me for who I am. Then say I don't need it and walk away. I might have fucked it up because I haven't actually read it on paper in years. But, um... I just fucking love that poem. Like, it's so short, but there's so much happening in it, you know? Um, who is on your Mount Rushmore of poetry? Um, I honestly thought and thought and thought about this. Um, and um, I was talking to a buddy and the buddy said um, that I rebel against everything all the time. And um, typically people grow out of that. And so that like kind of pissed me off. <laughs> so um, like, uh, like it makes me want to just blow up Mount Rushmore now. Um, but we won't, we'll try to answer the question here. So, like, Bukowski, obviously. Um, Henry Rollins. Um, Douglas Blazik, pre-1980, if that's at all possible. And um, I would say the biggest head on there would be me. So, um, that's how that'll go. Um, what is your favorite poetry collection? I just got it out before I... Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is um, Skull Juices by Douglas Blazik. Um, this, um, if I did a video like not very long ago actually, where I was saying like this used to be like my favorite um, poetry collection um, of all time. And then I read it again and I wasn't that impressed by it anymore. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, I really liked this at one time. And then um, I just read it again recently, and I love it again. So, um, I don't know. But um, I'm going to read it to you my favorite poem out of this book right now, because that changes all the time, too. Say hi to Elsa, everybody. Oh. Um, this is to my love who is cleaning the basement. There's a sagging Stone Age couch on which we squirmed in every position possible while the traffic crawled like caterpillars, my hand kicking up dust as it always ran the stop sign by your groin. In the darkness, hotter than meatloaf, two jellyfish darting together as if they could break out of their skins. And sometimes, after we pulled the moon apart, I'd miss, and the couch would absorb my sperm like an oil, an old oil rag. Such a couch. I love it so entirely that sometimes I don't know whether I'm loving you anymore, or perhaps this couch is you. With crumpled haunches, a swayed back, and breasts like two laundry bags stuffed full. I love it. I love... Oh, I love it. The way things are always loved. The way a beggar drinks a hot cup of coffee at the Salvation Army. The way a teaspoon floats through cereal in the morning. I love it. Because it has seen so much of me. Has felt all my weight and accepted it. Has never complained. Has sucked me into its soul. Like a submarine of bubblegum. Tomorrow... A new one will be sitting in its place, giving me cold, haughty looks of death. An old Stone Age will be downstairs in the basement with stacks of records and world atlases on its lap and probably some protective plastic in case the dog decides to piss. A lot of me will be there, down there too, lodged in its stuffing, although no one will know that. They won't say, hi, Blazik, as they walk past, eyeing the nailed goat hoof legs. They won't know where to find me. Not even my friends would understand if I told them to go downstairs and talk to the couch. So, 
um, and uh, having um, love for inanimate objects is um, something that happens a lot around here. So I feel that. Um, rhyming, talk about it. Yes, no, not anymore. Um, rhyming poetry. Um, I think rhyming poetry is not good now. Not now. Like the poetry that's being written now, but like me personally, like there was a time when I really liked it a lot. And there was a time when, because I was in bands and doing music and stuff, you're always writing songs and everything rhymes and everything like that. And you notice that um, certain people have like go-to words um, and it just, it gets old and like, so, like, you know, if, um, this is, like, a very, like, amateurish way of describing this, but, like, you know, if, like, one line ends with bed, the next one's gonna end with, like, head, dead, or lead, or something like that. The problem with rhyming poetry, to me, is that when you're reading it and you're trying to like, figure out what the person's saying. And they go for a rhyme, and sometimes it's not quite right, it's not quite a rhyme, or it's a word that you wouldn't have, cho like, chosen. And you, you start focusing on the word choices more than you focus on what's being said. And I think that is a huge problem with poetry. Um, and I think, like, the best writing poet in the world was Dr. Seuss, and everyone else could go suck an egg. Um, I think after Dr. Seuss did his thing, everyone should have just said, like, oh, well, I guess that's it then. I guess I should go get a job at the coffee bean or something now. Like, fuck. He nailed it. Like, we don't have to do this anymore. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, barring free verse, what is your favorite poetic form? I don't have a favorite p poetic form. I think form is dead. And I hate form. Um, and... I understand it exists. I understand there's history with it. But when you hear a bunch of people talking about perfect form and, like, all this other stuff, and, like, I know they probably care about what the poet is saying, but it seems like when you talk form, you don't talk about what is being said. You talk about if it fit into the rules of everything. And I fucking hate that. Um, and I know that a lot of people, cause like I've sent my stuff out to places and it's been rejected and come back like, Oh, just so you know, this isn't actually poetry. You know, like we, we really like, although there are places that'll take stuff like this, this isn't actually poetry. Um, why don't you come to our workshop and um, we could teach you form and I'm like dude a been there done that and B, like no I am not looking at how to structure like sentences together you know like I'm not looking to do that I am am looking to express my soul like a fucking giant zit that if I don't pop it will engulf my whole fucking face, you know? And when I squeeze it and it pops and the fucking pus shoots out all over the place and gets all over you, like, that's what I want to have happen. Like, I want to pus on you, okay? Like, that is poetry to me. 
and um, I want it to smell, I want it to stink and be sticky and be hard to get off of you. That's what I want. And when I'm looking at poetry in form, just like I was saying with the rhyming, um, I'm constantly looking to see if they fuck the form up. And I'm not, and this might just be a me thing, but I can't read it without um, counting and like trying to figure out if this was done correctly and stuff. So I think um, form just needs to, um, I, I'm just over it. Like it has no place. Um, humor and poetry, yes or no? Uh, yeah, totally. Like, um, it takes a very wise man to be able, or a woman, I'm not trying to like hurt anybody here, but it takes a very wise person to be able to bear their soul, bear their heart, bear their shame, and um, be big enough to see the humor in it and poke fun at it at the same time. And um, that is a talent. And there are people who can do that. And most people can't. And um, the people who can do it, um, you will always find endearing. People who can't do it, um, you will usually find pretentious and trite. So um, you can get whatever ideas out of that you want. Um, what elements do you think contribute to the best poetry? No elements. No elements, no form, no rhyming. Um, just blood. Blood, 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 blood. Cut your wrist, cut your throat, bleed, pull your teeth out, blow your nose, shit on the paper. Like... You're, you have to be you, and you have to be able to, every time you write something, to commit suicide just a little bit. Have little deaths, have little, um, like it should hurt, like, you can have, like, a beautiful, joyous poem, that's fine, and in doing it, um... There just needs to be real emotion, not not canned laughter, not canned, like, oh, like, I mean, you could write that shit, and two days from now, no one will remember it, and if they do remember it, they won't remember who wrote it, you know? You have to be able to, like, slip the noose around your neck, jump off a building, um, and know that it's going to hurt when the rope gets pulled, but if you could swing back and break that window and come in and have the rope get cut, you can write another day, you know? Um, it should be dangerous. I was talking to somebody else recently about wanting to, like, feeling like my silence about certain issues is like kind of ripping me up inside and um, I wanted to do something about it. And the person I was talking to just said like, in this climate, you cannot do that. It would be like literary suicide. You cannot do that. And that just like, it like broke me inside, you know, like, there should never be any limits to what you can and cannot say in poetry. And again, I've said this before, the best um, examples of what poetry is um, both come from Bukowski, in my opinion, and that is... Um, like, poetry is... Like, being able to say something in as few of words as possible. Um, so when someone says, like, oh, you're just journaling. And I'm like, actually, like, 
I'm really taking time, like, pulling out all of these unneeded words to get the point across, you know, like, um, and just living in the Twitter age and like, I just think like now is the time for people to understand it. Like our, our language has gotten so compressed that we can do this now, you know, we can, we can say what we feel, we can say what we mean and when we mean it and how we mean it very concisely. Um, and then the other thing, uh, Bukowski said is, uh, genius is saying something very complicated in a very simple way. And, um, like, that's brilliant. Like, you shouldn't have to have a college education to be able to understand a sonnet written by somebody. Um, like, and I also really don't like poetry when the words being used in the poem are not how the person speaks. So, and it's okay to like drop words in here and there, drop a metaphor in here and there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I enjoy that. But when like your whole like soul of poetry is to just try to stump people, just try to like make people go, oh, damn, that guy knows a lot of words. That's not poetry. That's like showing off. That's like a pissing contest. That's like everyone dropping their dicks out and trying to see like which one is, I don't know, the most dickish. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I need some more coffee and now I'm all upset. So, um, this tag is fucking brilliant. So if you would like to do this, I really want you to. And, um, if you do like come back and leave a comment, in my video or tag me in your video so I could come and check it out and watch it. Um, so until next time, everybody take care.